guys, welcome back. I'm Megan. And I'm Ryan. And together, we are Fire from 70K. Today, we're going to talk about the joys and the growing pains of combining finances and bank accounts with your partner. Okay, before we talk about any other aspect of combining finances, I think we need to take a trip down memory lane and talk about how we used to do things. Uh, we would split the bills basically in half right down the middle because we both make about the same income. She'd pay half, I'd pay half. And at the end of the month, we'd take whatever we hadn't spent on bills and also managed to spend splurging and buying stuff and basically voluntarily donate it to our debt snowball or our savings account. And at the beginning of the month, you know, that number was, let's just say, $800 total for both of us. But after 30 days where we had bought in little piddly things or bought this or ate out, blah, 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 we might only, you know, be donating $400 towards it. And you're like, well, where did it go? Well, I, I didn't do as well this month. Sorry, babe. You know, that kind of a thing. It, it's a very inefficient way to do things that way because there's no real accountability. It's just like, do your best and we'll keep it up. <laughs> Absolutely. And in fact, I want to admit to you guys that we were together five years, two of those married, one of those on baby step two, before we even considered combining in uh, bank accounts and finances. And once we did, there is a whole new level of accountability and able to achieve as a team things you didn't think possible. Back when we were on baby step two, it would take us, it took us longer than it should have simply because we weren't working as truly as a team as we should have been. Exactly. It, it, we could have done it in half the amount of time that we did it, honestly. And now I really that, think that, too. Well, and now that we combine bank accounts, you know, instead of having, let's say, 800 extra best-case scenario, it might be 1800 or $2,000 a month now just because we're working together, each other sees what we're doing, and there's so much more accountability. If I'm going to go, you know stop somewhere and eat fast food, I'm like, eh, I really don't want to do that. It, she's going to know I'm, <laughs> I'm cheating on our meal plan leftovers because I'm going to Chick-fil-A. He and did it, not have the we have food at the house talk with himself. <laughs> no, no, but, but now I do. Same thing. It, it's, it works both ways. It sounds like a bad thing. It, it's terrifying because you don't want to be told no or yeah. you don't want to tell yourself no because it's not even me telling her no or her telling me no. It's just you're like, oh, they're going to know. Like... Dang, <laughs> but it, it helps keep you in control so much more. And at the end of the month, you're like, where did all this money come from? We, we should have combined accounts and finances years ago. We'd be way further ahead than we are. Absolutely. I 110% agree with that. So what eventually changed for us? What made us change our mind about our separate bank accounts? Well, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, it wasn't this guy keeping us from combining uh, finances. It was me. Um, you know, the home that I grew up in, it wasn't a good example of what a healthy financial marriage should be. And I was always waiting for the anvil to drop. You know, I loved him enough to take his last name, but I didn't love him enough to be fully transparent and committed as far as finances go. And when we went to the money and marriage event in Nashville this last February, my coworkers actually asked me why we were going to therapy. They didn't realize that it was a, hey, we're, it's, it's a pep rally really for uh, Dave Ramsey followers. And the speakers there and you know the education we received while at that event really opened my eyes to the fact that I was not fully committed to my husband in every way that I should be as a wife. And it still was a couple, I don't know, a month or so later, I think, maybe two, yeah, when I finally broached the idea of, hey, I think this is something we needed to do. And he has been truly supportive in understanding and understanding and everything that I've asked for as far as being feeling secure in this decision. So we did finally combine finances just a couple months ago. Um, there have been some growing pains, ups and downs along the journey, um, and we've addressed them and moved uh, 
in a positive direction, but I think we're going to talk a little bit about that individually here. So one thing about me that anybody in my life can tell you is that I'm fiercely, stubbornly independent. And for better or for worse, that includes my finances. And when Ryan and I agreed that combining finances was in the best interest of our marriage, I overcompensated hard. Uh, that month, I worked on the assumption that I needed to ask my husband permission to spend any kind of money that wasn't budgeted for, even though he had never said anything of the sort. I just decided that was what was best for the budget. Um, and by the time the next month's budget had rolled around, I was beyond ticked. I was resentful. I didn't want to have anything to do with making the budget anymore because I felt as if nothing I was doing was working. And to tell you the truth, he ended up being incredibly annoyed by it as well. And one way that we solved that was that we set, uh, a, set a, a set dollar amount, really, that we could spend before we needed to discuss it with each other. Um, and that has actually worked out really well. I'm actually spending less money now that I know that I have this money to spend, which sounds a bit backwards, but it really does work, especially if you're the free spirit. You end up not wanting to uh, spend that money you have. It's really qu quite great. And I feel as if I not only have my financial independence back, but I feel as if I can be an, an active member and contribute to the success of our budget together. Okay guys, so one of the first issues that came up uh, when we were getting ready to combine our bank accounts was I was going to Chick-fil-A quite often for breakfast after me and Megan would eat breakfast in the morning before we went to work. So I was stopping on my way to work almost every morning or every other morning to have second breakfast with the good people at Chick-fil-A. Uh, don't recommend it, taste great, uh, love those chicken biscuits, but it's 20 bucks a week, 80 bucks a month. That's a lot of money that you don't need to spend, especially when you're not really that hungry. You're just, man, those chicken biscuits. I can't say enough about them. Chick-fil-A, love you. Anyways, I've given you up. But um, the other issue that we also had was uh, as soon as we combined the bank accounts, both of us felt afraid to buy even little stuff. I mean, like $2 items, $8 items, $15 items without first asking the other person. So I'd be at work and get a text message from Megan like, hey, this is $8, uh, can I order it? What do you think? Or an audio book or something. And I'm like, yeah, of course, go ahead. It's $8, who cares? After a couple weeks of that, uh, she was getting, I think, resentful and tired of asking. And I was honestly getting a little annoyed because it was such small stuff. I'm like, babe, don't ask permission. Just, just do it. You know, it, if it's an expensive item, let's talk about it, see if we need it, that kind of a thing. But for the small stuff, don't ask, just do it. I'll see it when it comes through. I get alerts on my phone for all of our bank stuff. I know it as soon as it happens, she gets the alerts too. So, you know, even now I'm like, oh, I see you were shopping at blah, 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 but you don't need to ask for permission. We've kind of set a standard of like $50 on up, then let's go ahead and talk about it or at least let the other person know. But none of the small stuff, nothing that's in danger of as far as uh, like bouncing or going into overdraft in our account or anything like that. We had to clear that up uh, pretty early because, like I said, it, it became a source of resentment and annoyance, quite frankly, and was unnecessary. But other than that and giving up uh, Chick-fil-A's chicken biscuits, it's been pretty good. We've been able to save a whole lot more money, and we're working together now. We both do the budget. We both plan it out, and I wish we would have done this five years ago, honestly. We should have. And if you haven't done it yet, I strongly suggest you uh, consider with your partner going down this road. You won't regret it. All right, so you've heard our story. And your journey will have its ups and downs just like ours. But my one piece of advice to you is just to be open and communicate with your partner. It will make this journey so much more worthwhile. Yeah, definitely just if something's rubbing you the wrong way, talk about it, work through it, back up, try something differently. Honestly, if you combine bank accounts and finances and you don't like it, it's like Dave always says about debt. If you get debt free and you don't like it, you can always go back into debt. You can always take out 
uh, another mortgage or more credit cards, whatever, just try it. See what you like, what you don't like. I wish we would have done it years ago. We'd be so much farther ahead financially. I do too. Just give it a shot. Take the plunge. You more than likely won't regret it. I'm Ryan. And I'm Megan. And we're Fire from 70K.